Number 65. Cobalt-60 and iodine-131 are radioactive isotopes commonly used in nuclear medicine. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in atoms of these isotopes? And then write the complete electron configuration for each isotope. Okay, so let's work one at a time. Let's work with cobalt-60 first. So I'm going to put cobalt-60 here. And they want to know how many protons, neutrons, so I'm just going to put P, N, and E here. And then they want us to write the electron configuration. Okay, so on a side note, right, they say that cobalt-60 was used, or is used in nuclear medicine. So cobalt-60 was basically used to, um, for basically two reasons, uh, to sterilize medical uh, equipment, you know, for surgical procedures, and also it was used to actually kill cancer cells. I think um, the use of cobalt-60 to for cancer is fading away because there's newer and better technology out there, but that's what it was used for for anyone who wanted to know. But now let's get down to the question. So we got to find out protons, neutrons, and electrons in cobalt-60. Now, they say cobalt-60, so first let me just show you where cobalt is, and it's right here. And remember, we always take the atomic number for any element, because remember, each atomic number is specific and unique to each element. If I change the atomic number of a element, you will automatically change it to a different element. So cobalt-60, the atomic number, I'm just going to put a number, is 27. And remember, this goes back to chapter 21. What does the atomic number equal? Oh, it equals the number of protons. So this is basically saying that I have 27 protons. So 27 protons, because that's the atomic number. Now, they tell us that it's cobalt-60. So what do you think this 60 represents? This 60 is the mass number. And remember, the mass number is always equal to protons plus neutrons. So if I have 60 as my mass number, and I know now that I have 27 protons, I can just do some simple algebra to find out how many neutrons there were, right? All you got to do is just 60 minus 27. So 60 minus 27 is 33. So now I have 33 neutrons. And one last thing, they want to know the electrons. Now they say that they're specifically atoms, and atoms are not ions, right? So... That means that there are no change in electrons. We didn't gain electrons. We didn't lose electrons. So technically, the number of protons should equal the number of electrons because an atom will always be neutral. So the positives have to um, cancel out with the negatives. So if there was 27 protons, there should be 27 electrons. And that answers the first part. Now... Let's do the electron configuration. This we should know how to do, right? We're on number 65, and this whole chapter has basically been about electron configuration. So we just have to do the electron configuration for cobalt. Just remember that this yellow group is where your S subshells are. This green group is the P's. This is the D's. And these two are the F's subshells. And just remember that the S's start with 1, so 1S. The P's start with 2, so 2P. The D's start with 3, so DD, DD, 3D. And the F's start with 4, so that's 4F. Remember, always follow the atomic number. We got to get down to number 27. So we always got to start with hydrogen, number 1. So that's 1S, 2, because we have to pass both boxes. We're now over here. That's 2S. 2, because i got to pass both boxes. Now I'm over here in the 2p realm, so 2p6. I'm down over here. That's the 3s2. I'm over here now. That's the 3p6. And I'm over here, whoop, right, the 4s2. And then finally I'm in 3d, so I'm in the group that I need to be in. Now i just got to count all the way to cobalt. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 3D7. This is a atom, which means that there's no charge. So box this answer off. That's the electron configuration for cobalt. 
And that's it for cobalt. Now we just got to do the iodine one. So iodine, you're going to basically do the same thing, but just for iodine. So the first thing they want to know is the protons, neutrons, and electrons. And for all of you that want to know what iodine-131 is used for in nuclear medicine, um, <clears throat> it's basically used for hyperthyroidism, so it kills overactive thyroid um, cells. So it's for patients who have like grave disease or hyperthyroidism in general. So that's what iodine is used for. Okay, so iodine is over here. Atomic number is 53. So that means that there's 53 protons. So I could put 53 protons here. And since they're atoms, protons has to equal electrons. So that's 53 electrons as well. And now they're telling me that it's ion one, iodine 131. So that's the mass number, right? And if the mass number equals protons plus neutrons, and we know that the protons is 53, I could just do 131 minus 53 to get 78 neutrons. So that answers that. Now we just got to do the electron configuration. And it's just for the iodine atom. So wherever it is, we don't have to add or subtract any electrons. So iodine's all the way down here. We got to start with hydrogen. So 1s2. Now we're dropped down over here. So that's 2s2. Now we're in the 2p land. So 2p6. Now we're in 3s world. So that's 3s2. Moving over to 3p. 6, then we're dropped down over here, that's 4s2. Now we're in the first blue section, so that's 3d. I gotta pass all of this, because I still need to get all the way down here. So that's 3d10. Now I'm over here, that's 4p6. Drop down to 5s2, 4d10. And then last but not least, we're in the right, you know, grouping here. We got to get over here. This is the, what is this? This is the 5p. So I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 electrons deep. So that's 5p5. And that's it. This is an atom, so we don't have to add or subtract any electrons. Box that answer off. That's the electron configuration for iodine. And yeah, that's the end of this question. So check that one off. Thank you so much for tuning in. What do you what do you guys think of this question? Hopefully it's getting a little bit more easier, but with practice, you will get much more comfortable. I promise you with that one. So do as many problems as you can. It will help you out. I promise that. If any of your classmates, you know, are struggling as well, or if they just want more practice, you could send them this their way. I appreciate that. And thank you for supporting the channel. I hope we are doing you a justice by making this as simple as possible for you guys. I'll see you guys all in number 66. Have an awesome day.